Welcome to Relaygram, your ultimate telegram for wedding software. You've just downloaded Relaygram and you've been asked to enter your telegram app ID and you don't know what that is. So I'm going to show you how to get that right now in this video. To get that, you need to click on this button here, get your app ID. When you click on this button, it will open up a website which will then ask for your phone number in international format making sure you add the plus key and your phone number. Once you enter that, you will find yourself on the following page. Once you put your phone number in, you'll get a confirmation and then you, once you click OK, you click on API development tools. And over here, you are going to get an ability to create a new application. Now the whole point of this is just to get the API ID. So you can really write anything in here. You can just write AI tool or anything you want, anything you can think of, AI, translate, whatever you, you could just be creative here, AI tool, and you can give it a short name, tool, and then you don't have to put a URL, you just put Windows here, uh, desktop, and AI tool here, and then create application. Oh, it has to be five characters, so do AI tool, and then create application. There we go. So we've got all the information we need now so that we can start using it. All we need from here really right now is the API app ID. This is the information you have to put in. Uh, all the other information we're going to need later. So you, you, I mean, only the, this information here, the API hash, we're going to need that later and the app ID. So let's go back. Now all you need to do is paste your app ID, which you just got into this box. So for the example, I'm going to put this number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Click Verify and Authorize. And then it will ask you to authorize your app by visiting this URL. Now, and then you just fill in your name and your email. Then you start my free two-day trial. Then you will see that your the status of your software is active and you've got three days to use it. Uh, and if you go back to your app, you will actually see that when you click verify again, it will authorize the app and then you'll be asked for all the, the information that we created earlier, which is your API hash and your phone number, including the international code. Once you enter this information, you'll be ready to start creating rules and start using the software. Thank you for watching this informational instructional video. Bye for now. Now, if you want to use AI, you have to get your Gemini API key. To get it, you just click on this here, on this link. It will open up Google AI Studio. And over here, you can grab your API key. And then you can paste it in here and click Save. We have Gemini, and now we can click Save App Settings. And we are ready to start forwarding messages from one place to another. Now, my account in Telegram is completely empty. Like, I have nobody and nothing in here. So what we're going to do is create a few groups so that you can see exactly how it works. And that way you can and just you can set it up how you want. But this is how I set it up just to make things easy. So let's create a new group. A uh, new group. So here we're going to create a new group and we're going to make it an input group. Just it's actually our private input group so that anything we put in here will be processed and we'll, we'll go um, you know, elsewhere. So it's called Demogram created this group. So if I type in here, for example, it's going to be processed and it's going to go to another group, which we can call um, Chinese group, for example. So now I've got an input group, a Chinese group, and I'm going to create another group. Well, let's call it um, teaser group. Free VIP. And then you can also create channels as well. So if we create a channel called uh, VIP information and click create and make it, let's say, a public or private, whatever you want, only people with a link, whatever you, whatever you prefer, you can do whatever you need. And then you do save. So now you can see I have an input group and I have all these other groups. Now, the truth is, um to be honest with you 
You can even do this from groups you're in. So if, for example, I'm in someone else's group, you can still extract the messages from that group. So any, even if you're in a group that you're in, that's not your group, you can still take the messages from where you are and then they and it can forward it to anywhere you want and process them. So let's start using this account now. And now that we're logged in with everything here, we're going to add a new rule and we can give it a name. Let's say, let's start with the Chinese rule just for fun. Um, with the source chat, uh, we have to kind of actually refresh the list of chats. So we'll click on that and then it, it just kind of loads them all. Then you can, let's do the Chinese one first. The source chat is the input group. The destination chat, you can do multiple destinations if you want the same message. So we're going to choose uh, the Chinese group as the destination. And you can select what type of media you want. So if you only want text, you just deselect all. If you don't mind anything that's in that group to be forwarded, you uh, just fill that in. If the text contains this text, it will be sent. If you, don't, if you leave this all empty, it will just always forward. Uh, there's more conditions here. You can also send a message instead of, uh, meaning if, uh, like instead of what's been written, you can have this text written before what's been written. Like for example, you can say, this text is being forwarded like that, for example, and then this will be the message and then the text that you that is in the message. You don't have to, you could just leave all of this empty. You have a delay in seconds before it's being sent. And this is the whammy of this app. This is what makes this app so perfect. You can create AI conditions. For example, if is the message funny? For example, so if it's funny, it will be forwarded. If it's not, it won't be forwarded. And here we have the modification prompt. So what you want the, the, to happen to the text before it's forwarded. So for example, if I say, I want it trans translate to Chinese, that's it. So we've finished, we've made our first rule. Here it is, it's called Chinese. And if we click start forwarding now, you'll see this goes green up here and we can start testing our app in live to see if it works. So what we're gonna do now is just type something like hello, and then we are not expecting it to go to the Chinese group because this text is not funny. But if I said, why did the chicken cross the road? Because he couldn't fly. For example, that's, I don't know if that's funny. We'll let the AI decide. But if that is funny, it's going to be forwarded to the Chinese group. Uh, we have to let the AI decide if this is funny or not. Let's have a look here at the logs to see if he thinks this is funny. AI condition not met. The AI thinks it's not funny. So you know what? Let's just change the, um, we're going to change the condition because I don't know how to be funny at this specific moment. I don't know what to say to be funny. So I'm just going to say if the message, um, hey. The AI condition is if the message is more than one word. It is the message more than one word. You can add more conditions, as many conditions as you need for this specific situation. Now let's click start forwarding and now we'll try again. And then we'll type here, I, we love this app. So now it's four words. The AI should say, this is acceptable to forward to the Chinese group. And in no time, you're going to see a new message appear in this group automatically. Here we are. It's just been translated right now. Fantastic. So I can literally take this information, take information from an English group and create a Chinese group and it will literally automatically be translated to Chinese. I can do that. I can have one group in English and then I can translate it to like a hundred languages all by putting one message in an input group. So if I, sh I demonstrate that right now, uh, it, it, let's create another group quickly, a new group. We'll call it a French group. 
and then uh, we'll create that. And then what we're going to do is refresh the chat list. And then we're going to stop forwarding so that we can create a new rule. And the new rule is going to be French. And then we're going to be from the input group, sending to the French group. And then we're just going to translate to French and click OK with no conditions. And then we'll click forwarding. And what you're about to see is freaking magic. I'm going to go in here and type um, more than one word. Otherwise, it won't work for everything. Um, I love this application. Now, in a number of seconds, because we have a refresh of 15 seconds, we're going to get a message in the French group, which says, I love this application. And also in the Chinese group, I love this application. Fantastic. So we just sent one message and received two messages in two different places. Fantastic. Now it's time to do um, something a bit more complicated than this. Uh, so we'll click stop forwarding so that we can make changes. Uh, anytime you can change the interval here, how long it checks for messages, I recommend 10, 15 seconds if you're not in too much of a rush. Uh, it will check every 15 seconds for new messages. And um, this is the Gemini version we're using. It's uh, quite good and cheap. If you need something more powerful, then you can definitely change that. Um, so let's create a new rule. Um, let's think. Okay, so the teaser group is a group where we tease people into wanting to buy what we're selling. So the source chat is again going to be the input group. The destination is going to be the teaser group. And then over here we're going to say uh, we're not going to send um, any any images or anything. And then we're going to say please tease the user into wanting to get all the information by joining our VIP channel. Don't provide all the information from the input. Rather, remove key information. So here now we have three rules, which we can now put into practice and see how they work. So let's do a, a rule, say, if you buy um, apples today, no, uh, let's think of something valuable, valuable information. You can download Relaygram for free from Relaygram.com. So this is like high quality information. So for the teaser group, I'm expecting the information to to be hidden, meaning the website might be hidden. Okay, so here it, it's, it's given the information. Obviously, the prompt could be improved. But as you can see, this is the message that was sent to the VIP group. To the French group, we got the information here. To the Chinese group, we got it here. And everything is working exactly as it should. So this, basically, it's very customizable. You can completely um, decide how you want to use this app, make it your own. It can do anything you can possibly think of, basically, from one to another. And this is perfect for managing your Instagram, sorry, your Telegram account without having to be in front of your phone all day. So this thing is waiting for messages to come. And then when they come, it does whatever it needs to do with them and it changes them. Now, the, um, the one thing that I didn't explain in too much detail was the AI conditions. This is going to help you decide when you want to send a message or not. So sometimes there's messages coming in that you actually don't want forwarded. So you can just create a prompt here. So if the message has a username, don't send it, for example. And then that way it won't send the info, it won't actually send it. But rather when the message doesn't have a username inside it, it will send a message. So you can decide what this prompt is. It can say, if the message is negative, uh, is, the um, is the message positive? 
if yes, send. For example, and then you can add more conditions and it will be checked uh, separately. That way you can filter messages out. Now this tool can also be used as an autoresponder as well. Because if you have messages coming in to your account, uh, into your private communication, you can have a FAQ. So you can have a rule here, which basically the rule is FAQ responder. And basically the source chat is going to be where your conversations, meaning if anyone talks into your private DM conversation. Um, I'm trying to think where that would be. Sorry, forgive me. I guess it's not going to be possible right now to respond to private messages. Uh, we might add that functionality in the future. But right now, we are talking about perhaps responding to a comment or somebody who asks a question inside a group, a public group, that people can actually type in. Then it's going to be responding to them with regular answers. So if we say, for example... Um, if somebody sp like asks inside your group, here, let's create a rule for this. Uh, let's use the um, VIP information group. It's going to be FAQ. The destination is actually going to be... Sorry, forgive me. I just realized you can't really use this as an FAQ because it will only go from one group to another group. It cannot respond to messages. So forgive me for saying that. Um, it's a brand new app. That's why I'm also getting to know it myself. And uh, my job is just to show you how to get started. And I hope it makes sense. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it makes sense. If you have any questions, email us or you can use our contact form on our website. Thank you for watching this video and bye for now.